everybody, I'm Melissa Sorrentino. Welcome to the Improv Sophisticate, where we talk about improv and life and how the two interact with each other. It's very exciting for me and interesting, hopefully, for all of you. Okay, guess what? It is currently December 30th, so tomorrow is the last day of the year, okay? I have a couple of things that I want to upload. Um, I might do one tomorrow. Maybe I'll do a second one later today. But um, in regards to New Year's and resolutions and um, the different approach that I've been taking towards my life utilizing improv versus a more traditional um, linear path towards goal reaching. So that is a little teaser for you all and also a little bit of accountability for me that I'll actually do it because it, it's kind of a cool idea. All right, so um, today though, I wanna talk about something way more juicy and that is tomorrow night, you're going to hopefully be kissing somebody. And I use, um, well, I'm trying to be PG-13 so I'm using kissing, but I actually talk about making love when I talk about improv um, quite a bit because I think they have a lot in common. So I want to talk today about kissing and how um, your improv scenes are very similar to that kind of exciting chemistry that you have when you are, you know, when you're romantically interacting with somebody, these are requirements. So if you apply them to your improv, it might help your kissing. But if you're already good at kissing and you start putting that into your improv, I think it's going to help your improv. So let's talk kissing. Okay. In kissing, there is a give and take. And if you don't have this going on, you're probably not the best kisser. So um, good kissing, good quality kissing is going to be a shared experience with two people. So let's just think of it like a two person scene and you need to have give and take. I know you've probably heard the phrase give and take. If you haven't, what is wrong with your teachers? Because it's a huge deal, give and take. So there is give, and then there's take. Now, um, giving, let's just be very, very basic. A scene may be where giving is the other person is talking, okay? Um, so when you're giving, you're giving your listening ear, you're giving them space to talk. Um, the person who's talking is giving their talking. So you're both actually giving all the time. It's just sometimes you're giving, um, think of like a negative, uh, you know, like uh, the black and white, and then you could switch it and like the black turns white and the white turns black. You know, there's black and white, white and black, however you want to see that. Okay. Um, with the giving, it's like that. Sometimes you're giving space and sometimes you're giving um, mass, okay, that fills the space. So let's say you're giving a line of dialogue, the other person is receiving. Hopefully they are accepting. When you give a gift to a person, you want them to accept the gift. You don't want them to go and then have the gift fly back at you, right? So um, with kissing, you're going to be, you're going to go in and the person who's going in, we will call it the giver of the kiss. The person who lets the other person in and receives that, you know, soft, they, they create a softness that the other person can apply their kiss onto. Now you've got giving and receiving. Now that can go on for so long, but then how fun is it if that person then gives a little bit and the other person needs to soften and receive. So you've got this like kissing scenario where you're like giving and then you're accepting. And if you're not accepting the kiss, maybe you're you know, that's not going to be a sexy kiss. Now, be aware that sometimes giving, if you're giving and the other person isn't receiving, um, maybe you're giving too forcefully and there's a way of forcing. So there's also that on the flip side with taking. If you're in a scene with somebody and they're giving you something, 
that is that you're receiving that's very pleasant to watch but sometimes somebody is just taking their space like you didn't give me space to talk but I'm taking it like I'm talking over you I'm uh, interrupting you I'm I'm being overbearing so you know if you think of it like kissing it's like you wouldn't go to kiss somebody and if they're a little bit hesitant, you wouldn't just kiss them harder. I mean, unless I guess it's like you're a you know molester or rapist or something like that. But you you know you want to you want to have that that um, that I want to say intuition, but I mean more uh, just sensitivity to whether the wh how much they're receiving and how much you're giving. If you're giving them like paragraphs. It's very difficult for your scene partner to accept all those paragraphs and then try to give back responses to all that information. But let's say there's a cute moment in a scene where people are going and somebody sort of steps up and starts to monologue. If you start to fade and just like, oh, I'm going to just, you know, um, take out the garbage and I'm going to just do dishes if you're in a sit, you know, a kitchen or something. And this person's like, when I was a child, blah, blah, blah. Part of what this person is, is doing is they're accepting the fact that you're taking stage. So there's give, there's take. Then, of course, there is mirroring and there is contrasting. When we kiss somebody, uh, very likely there's going to be a mirroring if you're sensitive to that. Especially like, let's say it's New Year's Eve tomorrow and you guys are on a first date and it's going to be your first kiss with that person. Or maybe it's spontaneous and, um, I don't know. A little warm sip of coffee seemed appropriate there. <laughs> okay, so so you've got that person in there in front of you, and then you have that beautiful, enticing moment where like you don't know if you're gonna kiss yet. You don't you don't know if you're gonna like peck kiss, or are you gonna like is there gonna be a little open mouth action? Is there gonna be a little like tongue interaction going on? You don't know that. But you're going in anyway and you're taking that risk. So you take the risk and then what do you do? You mirror. You mirror a little bit. So uh, if you've done a mirror exercise in class where you're both like, you know, and you're like mirroring each other's arms and you're mirroring each other's heads and yeah, go ahead and mirror me. Mirror me in the video. Oh, look, look how much fun we're having mirroring. So when you're kissing, you're going to mirror that kiss. You're going to probably try to... Um, apply the same level of pressure with your lips that your that your scene partner that your kiss partner oh god <laughs> oh, i'm always on stage so you know that your kiss partner is is you know applying a lot of pressure a lighter pressure you're going to be mirroring that you know are they way sticking their tongue in your mouth and it's like a big old swish around or is it like a gentle you know so you want to be kind of mirroring that but then every once in a while you have a moment where you contrast and then you see if they start to mirror what you're doing and now what are we talking about what's the third thing i talked about give or take i talk about mirroring versus contrasting and now i want to talk about heightening so there's heightening. Of course, clearly you can heighten from kiss to second base to third base to home run, right? So there's that escalating. But um, just even in, a, in, the, in the moments of the kiss itself, there's an escalation to the kissing where like you, you start off with that risky sort of trepidation and then, you, and then you reach a point where you're like, okay, clearly we are both on board and then maybe you go faster, maybe you go a little harder, maybe you go a little bit more um, like risk taking with the tongue movements and the lips and you know, maybe you start to meander off the mouth and do a little bit of like face and neck stuff. You you know, maybe you get your hands involved and you start like, you know, caressing the sides of their face or the back of their head. So there's just different ways you can escalate and heighten that until, you know, hopefully you're going to heighten it into like a frenzy and you'll be like, Happy New Year. <laughs> um, I think I should quit there. But I did want to also just mention that it's not necessarily only heightening. There's there's heightening and then backing off and then heightening and backing off. There's the giving and the receiving and then there's the whole oh, giving and receiving and then there's fast, fast and there's slow, slow. You would not kiss somebody by going at them really fast and if they stay really slow, 
That case is going to suck if you guys don't start to mirror, if it's only contrast. So it's the same in a scene work. If it's only contrast and you guys never get on the same page with the scene, it tends to become very annoying. But if you're only mirroring, like two people go to kiss each other, it's just, okay, that's a little boring. We're just... We're both coming at with equal give, equal take, um, equal mirroring, equal, um, you know, just equal, equal, then it's, you know, it's one note. It's boring. That's not a great kiss either. And that's like a quick kiss and you're done. But if you just held like that and be like, are you going to kiss me? Um, I don't know. Are you going to kiss me? I don't know. Let's just both wait it out. Let's just both wait it out, wait it out. So that would be boring, right? So we want to have like an interaction of textures and rhythms and, you know, flavors to our scene work too. All right? Um, have fun kissing and also have fun improvising. And I wonder what you like better, kissing or improvising? My vote is for kissing. Why don't you go ahead and vote on that in the comments below? <laughs> yeah, right. I think, yeah, I think we know what is going to be the winner there. Bye. Happy almost New Year's Eve, everybody.